Cool. Yeah. So the first thing I really, I really like looked out for and saw when I did a little like digging about you, your last name, it, it means unafraid of war. That's just like the ultimate, like has to be like a top like linebacker name for like college football, right? <laughs> yeah, it definitely, uh, it definitely was like the weirdest thing I've ever learned about myself because, you know, people have like me as their last name and it's like one random day in middle school. I just asked my dad, what does our last name mean? And he told me that. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so, Unafraid of war. Uh, that's one of the coolest things. About yeah, that's just probably fitting, like, really well. And another thing I saw was, um, how, how did you come to a decision to, uh, to not go to the draft this year? And what was the ultimate thinking behind that? Uh, you know, I just didn't feel like this season – went exactly how I wanted it to go and I feel like I could have proved more as you know as an athlete and as a person I just felt like I needed to grow as an individual um the injury definitely didn't help my chances but mm. uh, it was just more more so just like I feel like I could get better I feel like I could go out on better terms with the mm. university and just me as, as a person right right and now, because of this, the arm injury that you suffered, and it was week six, right, of the year mm -hmm. uh, versus UCLA, yeah. ha what is, like, a day in the life of, like, the recovery process look like for you? Um, it, it really just looks like me terrorizing my trainers, but, uh, <laughs> so I kind of just go in. We do, I still do the lifts with, like, everybody else. Uh, it's just, like, more like after the lifts, I'll go in and, like, do my rehab, so it's just like, strengthening in it. Uh, I'm in a process where like we're just gradually just adding more weights and okay. just like trying to like get my flexibility get my whole range of motions and stuff so we're we're in, we're in like a good spot it's just like they're just going easy and just trying to right. you know get the right. right so with time i'm sure that gradually like you said building up weight um right back mm -hmm. to normal where you left off because obviously um, yeah that's the main goal <laughs> Yeah. And now another another thing that was really interesting. I saw your hometown, Alaska. That's not. That's very unique. Very unlike a lot of athletes, particularly college athletes. And then you ended up going to a high school, transferred to a high school in Nevada, and then to Washington. What was the whole process behind? How did you get to a Nevada high school? And then why was Washington the right fit for you? Well, my mother was doing a. Uh a practicum she's a psychologist now but at the time she was trying to find places in Alaska and they were basically in the middle of nowhere but we always had a vacation house in Nevada we just never like lived there but we found one well she found one I didn't find it <laughs> we found one in uh, Nevada and I kind of just took they used that as an excuse to like join her and then all the ended up coming uh, at the end of 20 or at the I think the beginning of 2017, we all came to Nevada all together. Uh, but me going to Washington, that was, it really was just fate, you know, honestly. Um, I had a couple offers coming out of high school, but I just didn't feel like I could grow as a player and as a person, hmm. like the, my best abilities. So I asked uh, my linebacker coach, Chris Brown, who's now uh, the linebacker coach at Hawaii. I saw that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if we can just write a couple, like, well, he told me to write a couple schools that I would want to, like, walk on to, so I, like, studied, like, the tape of, like, all these high, like, colleges and stuff, hmm. and I really liked Washington, you know, I just felt like I would fit well there, and, uh, you know, I told him that, and, like, a couple weeks went by, he's like, I haven't heard anything from him, so I was just like, oh, well, I mean, he's looking, <laughs> looking pretty bad for that, and then it was one random day, you know, uh, a coach calls me, he says, hey, we're going to offer you a BWO in the middle of class, and I just committed right on the spot. And I didn't wow. tell my parents or anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess some things you just know are like intuition, where you feel that's definitely the best thing for me. Mm -hmm. That's probably what that yeah. was. And then at Washington, you get there as a retro, retro freshman, and then the player development had to be top of the charts at Washington. Because look at you now from a walk-on. Uh, talk about just about developing. Like, what are the big things that Washington and just overall, how do you develop as a player that you think? I think, uh, I think not only were we teach like learning skills that um, NFL players were doing, but like the players themselves were always trying to find new skills to get better. Like, just constant, like that constant state of improvement is like a real thing. 
hear how you dub and uh you know it was easy you know all you had to do was just listen and just like really try to figure out like the sciences behind how your body moves you know how to strike people what type of moves that you can take you know based on like momentum and stuff so uh and we were just always constantly learning about like how how we can make more efficient movements hmm. that makes a lot of sense because obviously it worked and to get you where you are now yeah. Even with still uh, recovering from an injury, I'm sure right path, especially mentally, getting your brain right. Like you said before, how you were studying like offenses just now today in uh, yeah. in, in January, <laughs> you know. So that's just the way to get ahead. Um, so what does next year look like for you? What are like some goals you have? Um, what does the linebacker core look like next year? And uh, yeah. Well, I think uh, as as a goal for me personally is just you know, just maximize my days, you know, like, that was one thing I learned during this, this injury, was that, like, I can't look into the future and just, like, I'm going to do this and that and this when I'm in a sling, and that just, like, just completely just makes you go crazy, so mm. what I, like, what my mindset is every single day is, like, I'm just going to be the best player I can be today, like, I'm going to see how much stuff I can do, how productive I can be, and then let those days stack up, and then when we're at this point, I know I'm going to be the player that I want to be at the end of the year. 100%. Uh, in, terms of oh yeah, in terms of the linebacking core, I feel like, you know, a lot of people don't really know us because, uh, like, Zoe's coming back from his, uh, from an injury. He played a little bit at the end of last year. Uh, Carson, you know, came late. Dan, uh, you know, was playing. And then we got Ken coming in. You know, I just feel like we're, we're really, we're underratedly experienced. Like, we're very smart. Like, you know, it's not just one guy learning the whole defense. Like, right. I, I'm even getting stumped by, like, you know, uh, people that didn't play last year, you know. Like, we're just so intelligent as a, as a defense. So, hmm. you know, we're very educated. You know, we're very athletic. We're very competitive. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, how we're going to do this year. Right. And then I was looking, um, part of the research I did was for Pro Football Focus, I saw it's three of the – Top three of the top four returning linebackers, all from the Pac-12. So, what does the competition look like in the Pac-12 usually for you guys? I was just talking to uh, my friend uh, EA. He, he plays at Ohio State. He he even admitted that the best linebackers <laughs> play in the Pac. And I I think I really believe that because you know it's the really the only conference that you really see linebackers having to you know rush the passer, but also you're doing a lot of coverage right. like deep 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 down the field then you also have to stop the front as well so it allows you to showcase your abilities unlike other conferences you know 100 percent versatility i'm getting at the pac-12 level is so big uh that's what i'm figuring out <laughs> what so now what now completely 180 here what's like the craziest thing that you've been a part of or seen outside of the football field at washington Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this on the podcast. <laughs> uh, I'll say I don't. I I don't. I yeah. I don't think I can answer that one. <laughs> I don't think I can say that one. Sorry. About that. All right. Yeah. No worries. Anything that comes to mind that you just thought was like really cool that you saw, or not not that things that you've seen, like things that like uh, have happened to you, or like big. How about this big biggest moment of like. Of like, say your athletic career, what would you say is just something crazy that happened? Um, I would say just how I, my first, I wouldn't say it was my first start. It was like the game before my first start. I was, uh, I was like actually like a second string. I was, a, I started as a third string, but one player got hurt. And then, um, during the process of that game, he, uh, well, he got a concussion. So I was literally the only Mike linebacker. And when the linebacker coach told me, like, oh, you're riding out with the rest of this game, you know, it was kind of weird because I didn't feel, like, nervous or anything. I just felt, like, ready. So, like, that was, like, the Oregon State game. I had, like, one and a half sacks, like, ten tackles, and, like, one pack 12 defense player of the week. I saw that. Like, the weirdest. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably say that was one of the biggest moments. Cool, cool. Yeah, now, when you're, when you're training, right, like in the off-season or even now, is there like a non-negotiable for you that you have to do, you have to do this before, you have to do this during? Is there like something you always do while training? While training? I think, I think you, 
in my like my mindset to training is I'd rather fail at my expectation than theirs. So I always try to like max out or like if I'm doing a max out right, I would probably do like 10, 15 pounds more than like like that's on the seat. If that makes sense. Or mm. if I'm sprinting <laughs> and then they say all right, like only go 70, maybe go like 80 and see like if your form is right, right? I got because, you. Because like ultimately, it's just like. Cause it's just gonna translate in life, right? Like, I'd rather fail doing what I said I was gonna do than fail to your expectations. Cause at least I exceeded your expectations, and now <laughs> I can live with the, you know, the failure of mine. So I got you. So, so, so just saying what you just said. When you're lifting, you say you have max outs. Like I, I played football in high school, so like I maxed out sometimes, but probably not to the degree that you guys do at Washington. But um, where you go, like say, I don't know, the body weight percentage of like. 90 percenters or something like 90 percent of your max do that one or something like percentages for weights you're talking about just yeah. doing more than the percentage yeah yeah that's what i was just trying to say <laughs> uh all right so um on, another thing on athlete pov is we always try to go into like mentally a mental aspect so now um we think we touched on this before but um when you when you did get injured this past season did that take a toll on you mentally at all like how are you feeling in the moment um, how did it affect you like a week after and what was was there any because not everything is all sunshine and rainbows like there's obviously like negatives to everything everything so would you be like willing to share anything that negatively happened to you after the injury yeah yeah uh, you know when I got injured it was like actually it was extremely frustrating because I was coming from like a different type of injury and I was just getting past that. So I'm like, okay, I'm really ready to mm -hmm. like start playing my best ball. I had like two good games or I had like one good game before, but like the UCLA game was the game where I was like, all right, like I, I feel good like going out there and mm -hmm. like, like really showcasing myself. And then, you know, like, you know, the bicep happened and it was just frustrating because like the whole year you work your butt off and then, you know, yeah. Like that happens, and uh, you come to the reality that you know it just didn't turn out the way you wanted to, and it it, it stung, you know, and it hurt watching, you know, uh, my brothers compete while you were just sitting on the sidelines, and you can't do anything to affect the game. So it just took a major toll on me, hmm. and it you know it I really got over it recently, uh, just talking to my parents about you know just how I wanted to like approach the next year in terms of like you know how I was gonna do things in the future and my dad just uh, just told me that I just want you to do I just want you to work as hard as you did when you first came here that's all I want mm -hmm. and you know that like that really just changed my mindset to like okay like regardless of what happens I'm just gonna work my butt off every single day you know and I'm gonna you know put my faith in God uh, I'm a religious person and just put my faith in uh and then, like, entrusting that, like, he's going to do things for me and that I just have to commit myself to him as well. Right. So and then, it's just, like, just putting in the work and, you know, trusting that all good things come to those who stay true and just letting it fly. That's, uh, that's, how, that's how I'm approaching this year. 100%. And you mentioned how working as hard as you did once you first got there. And I'm sure if you keep that consistently up, which I'm assuming you have and um, you probably have. Um, yeah only good things can come with consistency like you mentioned before I think earlier where you were like a couple oh, one day at a time taking it one day at a time on uh, the building blocks of just knowing once I do all of this this will happen so I feel like that's so important and so many like even high school athletes or even I guess some college athletes fail at realizing is that just consistency is the most important part of really athletics of training of really just focusing on any single goal that you may have so that's really nice that's really cool of you to to mention this and like bring it up which brings me to the last question we always ask on athlete pov which is um if you if you would have any advice to any athlete also going through some hardship whether it be mental health or be an injury um any advice should we give one piece to anyone going through something i would say i would say give yourself grace you know that was one of the big things that um my friend karen uh kevin carroll you know, gave me just, uh, you know, when it's bad, you know, just, <laughs> just allow yourself to embrace the badness for a second and just, 
when it's good, you know, like allow yourself to celebrate, but uh, you know, give yourself grace, like let yourself feel those emotions and you know, take really take it in. So then, like, you can be able to really move on from it and get back to where you want to go. So hmm. that's what I would say. Definitely, man. Great stuff. And I see in the background of where you are right now, you got a poster of Ali back there. <laughs> is that yeah. one? That's yeah. one. Is that one like a uh, big role model for you? Or do you have any like really uh, big figures that you look up to? Yeah, uh, so I got a, I got, I got MJ and Kobe back there. Um, Ali, you know, when I was walking <laughs> on, uh, I read, I read the Mama mentality, and uh, you know, I was like watching Ali quotes, and they, it really, you know, got me through a hard time, like that, that process of just, you know, just like working but not really feeling appreciated. Uh, and like listening to them, you know, reading the book, and just like understanding, like like just the true work ethic, you know. I just want to just give myself a reminder every day of just like the things I've learned from you know those the icons. Definitely, man. And even uh, me, look, I got I have Kobe right here. <laughs> it's my guy. Um, such a big part to like every athlete looks up to Kobe. I feel like. And any role model that you may have, whether it be an individual role model or a big figure like Kobe or Ali, um, always nice to look at, like, think of it in their shoes, what would they have done in your situation or something like that. Most definitely. Yeah, man. So that's about it. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on, and uh, I wish you the best next year, and it was great hearing from you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Of course.